I've been stock investing for the last decade now. And alhamdulillah, I've consistently seen double digit returns. Of course, the stock market has done really well over the last decade, but the point still remains. Getting involved in the stock market is actually surprisingly easy and not as scary as it might seem. You can easily find out the information that you need to get started. And if you know what you're doing, there are decent returns to be made as well. A stock is simply a representation of ownership in a company. Usually when we refer to stocks and shares and investing in them, we're referring to owning a stake in a public company. And the way that you make money from stocks and shares is you invest in that stock and hope it goes up in price because the company might be expanding or growing. And as a result, you make a capital gain. Alternatively, for companies that are quite mature and already profitable, they share out those profits regularly in something called dividends. Stocks are a great way to invest because they give you exposure to the entire economy. They also come in a variety of different risk flavors. So whether or not you are someone who's a high risk investor or someone who's a vanilla low risk investor, you will be able to find something in that stock's ecosystem and a way to invest in that stock's ecosystem that is right for you. A halal stock is simply a stock that is permissible for a Muslim to invest in because it meets certain criteria. There are two key criteria to look at to work out if a company is Sharia compliant to invest in or not. The first is qualitative. So you look at whether or not the company is obviously doing something Sharia compliant or not. So for example, you would not be allowed to invest in William Hill. You would not be allowed to invest in Heineken because of obvious reasons. They are a gambling company and an alcohol manufacturer. The second test is a quantitative test. The key thing to work out is how much debt levels you have in the company and whether or not they are at acceptable thresholds to Islamic scholars. The acceptable threshold is set at the 33% uh, debt to total market cap ratio. However, some scholars do prefer to use the total assets ratio instead. The other key thing to think about is how much of the company's regular income is coming from haram sources. That needs to be kept to a minimum below 5% of the total income. When it comes to stock investing, there are broadly speaking two routes that you can go down. The first is the DIY approach where you choose the stocks and shares that you put your money into. Or the second is you entrust someone else, presumably a professional, to manage that money for you. If you want someone else to manage your stock investing for you, then you are typically going to be looking for some kind of Islamic mutual fund or exchange traded fund that you can put your money into. You can do that by setting up an account with a mainstream stockbroker, someone like an AJ Bell or Hargreaves Lansdowne or IG.com, and then choosing an Islamic option within their fund search functionality and investing your money into that. You can even set direct debits so that the money goes in regularly. If you wanna go even more hands-off than that, then you can just park your money into something called a robo-advisor. What they do is they sign you up and they ask you what your risk profile and appetite is, and then they will allocate your money into a pre-set portfolio that they have created and they will be managing. Examples include people like Wahid Invest in the USA and UK and across the world, Aghaz in the USA, Sarwa in the Middle East, and many others as well. But if you'd like to take the DIY route and invest yourself, it is actually very doable and very enjoyable. You'll learn a lot about the economy, how companies work, how the stock market works, and you'll get a lot more out of it. Plus, you won't have to pay any fees to other intermediaries that would otherwise be managing your money for you. Capital gains tax is one of your key enemies when it comes to investing in stocks and shares because anything above the capital gains tax threshold, which is 12,500 tax free that you get every year, you will be taxed on. The way to avoid that is by putting your investments into something called the ISA account. And pretty much every stockbroker will offer this. So any profits that you make within this ISA wrapper will be tax free. In the USA, you have something equivalent called the IRA. And in other countries, you have similar tax wrappers as well. Remember, with an ISA and an IRA, 
there is a limit to it and the ISA limit is set at £20,000 annually. Another excellent way of investing into stocks and shares is by contributing to your pension. Because when you contribute to your pension, the taxman actually adds on 20% on top of that. And if you are a higher rate taxpayer, then that goes up to 40%. In other words, you could put in £600 and get £1,000 worth of pension. That's a huge return, something around the 60% mark. Those are the kind of returns that you will never see in the stock market otherwise. Finally, with those who have total assets of more than £325,000, you need to be aware of inheritance tax. Inheritance tax costs 40% on all of your assets above that £325,000 threshold. But there is a little known but incredibly effective technique to mitigate all of that tax burden. The government wants people to be investing in the AIM index, that's the junior index compared to the FTSE 100 or FTSE 250. And because they want to incentivize people to do that, they have said that if you hold AIM index stocks for over two years, then that entire pot of money becomes inheritance tax free. That means that if you are, let's say, a millionaire, then you could literally end up saving millions of pounds of inheritance tax simply by parking your money into these specific kind of investments. Stocks are a great way of getting started on your halal investing journey. And hopefully this video has shown that there's a lot more to it than meets the eye.